Investors Club got a great show for you. Bivy, B Bio V, uh, shockingly, surprisingly, is going to release, reveal its phase three Alzheimer's, uh, Alzheimer's study results in October. For patients, we are very hopeful. We're very hopeful for patients. We hope it works out. They have an inflammation. Remember, they have an infl we've talked about them a lot. We'll talk about them more today. They have an in a drug for inflammation. The three hallmarks of Alzheimer's is amyloid plaques, mis uh, misfolded tau tangles, tangled tau tangles, and uh, inflammation. So they have an inflammation drug. We'll take a look at them and their shady past and shady present as far as their ownership and why we are hands off uh, as an from an investing standpoint. We talked about their founder and. The, not just largest owner, but like the large owners of cassava are like Sanford and Remy. They own like 2%. This guy owns 87% of the company. And he's done more shenanigans since we talked about him last time, getting him kicked off the, off the, uh, out of the company, but he still owns 87%. So it's still his company. So we'll take a look at that and why we still are singing the same tune on that one. But the main topic for today is capitulation. It is, if you are on FinTwit, meaning financial Twitter, meaning X. So if you go on X and just look at uh, Twitter, uh, financial stuff, whatever people talk about, about stocks, especially BioFin Twitter, uh, biotech fin, fin financial stocks on Twitter, on X, uh, then it's just pain, 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 pain. The picture for today's show was uh, somebody saying, I've been at this for a long time with uh, trading biotech. It's never been like this. I'm thinking about, and he showed the white flag. So capitulation, meaning when people just can't take the pain anymore, it's it's very it's it's the antithesis of what happens near a top when there's so much euphoria. Even people that don't get don't, don't care about stocks, all of a sudden they got to be in the market, and there's, the market's not going to go down. It's just going to go up. We're now in the part of the cycle where the market's XBI is not going to go up. It's just going to go down according to sentiment. Everybody says, everybody knows, everybody knows XBI is just going down all the time every day. Well, lo and behold, with the whole market down today, XBI is up like 3% with everybody saying, I can't take with, so are we there? Is, is this capitulation? So we'll take a look at what capitulation looks like. Remember, this is not even the, the worst it's been, the bottom. Uh, in last year, in 2022, XBI was actually in the 60s. We dipped down to 71 yesterday. We're now up to 73. So it's actually been, so... Is this the end? Is this capitulation here with everybody feeling so bad? Or was it the end, the bottom uh, in 2022 when we hit the 60s? Or is the uh, or, or are we not there yet? Did we not hit? Well, so we'll see uh, the signs of capitulation as well. So let's dive in. Pretty cool stuff. Pretty cool stuff. 74. Uh, XBI cracked 73, now cracked 74. So up more than 3% on a day when uh, the market is down, down 0.64 and 0.60 for NASDAQ and S&P respectively. So there's the uh, XBI with everybody saying, I can't take it anymore. Did we get capitulation? It's up 3%. Bivy, by the way, is up like 15%. But let's talk about capitulation. So first, here, this is emblematic of the stuff we're seeing. There's just a lot of signs of pain in the Discord Tommy says, Joe, why isn't the SEC getting involved with all this stock market manipulation? It's getting ridiculous, especially with small cap companies, which encompass biotech. Please fight the fight. I have no power. At least you have knowledge and a following. And I said they are involved. They are the bad guys. Remember when we spoke with Lucy Komisar, the investigative journalist, talking about these uh, fraudulently manufacturing synthetic fake phantom shares. Uh, we, she was saying that they asked, there was like, a, she introduced us to Wes Christian, the lawyer who fights all this stuff. In an interview with him that she did, he delineated like 20 steps. He said that the shorts have a game plan and it's 20 different things and it's the same people. It's a, it's a, it's a cabal of people going through the steps. And he went through the steps and one of them is getting their buddies at the SEC involved. These, this is uh, the prime brokers, all the big banks, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, all the big banks, have, are, the number one way they make money is through prime brokerage. What is prime brokerage? Prime brokerage is a service they do for hedge funds, fraudulently making uh, synthetic shares out of nothing, it fails to deliver. So they 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 uh, make these they uh, they do they do the prime broker make all their money. And one of the things they do. So so who's the head of the SEC? 
Who's the head of the SEC? Gary Gensler. Where did he come from? The banking industry. Where do they all 100% of the time come from? They're banking executives. The banks make most of their money through this fraud. And the number and they're the leader of the SEC is always the, the people that come from making this money. It's a revolving door. They always talk, oh, we got to do something about the revolving door. That's the revolving door. The SEC is involved. They investigated cassava in order to make smoke. That was them getting involved, helping to make uh, to victimize regular people. The regulators are there to help regular people. In large systems, regulators get taken over by the biggest corporations. That's what we have here. So the SEC is a part of doing the, the shenanigans. We have a broken system. Uh, and then here's this guy. Uh, been trading XBI for more than a decade. Bunch of bad runs. Nothing like before. Feel like throwing in a towel, the white, white flag. All right. Uh, so, so here's from, I did a bunch of, uh, what's capitulation. So a bunch of different houses did their research. There's a couple of themes I've shown through. One is, uh, on volume. So volume when it, when the, when there's it's, it's pain, it's pain, it's pain. When it finally uh, hits the capitulation stage, volume ticks up and everybody says, I can't take it all and I can't take it anymore. And there's a big pickup in selling. So did we get a big pickup in selling? It actually looked like. We got, it, it, it either didn't come yet, or it's, uh, it did come last year in 2022. So here's the XBI. We got up as high as 174 and then dipped in uh, June of 2022 down to the 60s, almost the 50s. And then, and then in the bottom, uh, so far anyway, of, this, of 60 bucks uh, in 2022, that's when the volume spiked. It was, it was bad, bad, bad. So starting in... February of 2021, it started getting bad. And then 16 months later, the, the volume, uh, 12 to 16 months later, we had that huge spike in volume as it really sold off. So that that maybe that was capitulation. But now, so we, we're not having a spike now. So this, even though we have the sentiment now of pain, we're not having the spike of volume now. What else? Uh, volatility. So... An increase in volatility is often seen during market capitulation, meaning it's up and down a lot. So are we seeing a lot of volatility right now? Let's zoom in. Frankly, we're not, that doesn't really look like volatility as much as <laughs> a straight path down. So I'm not seeing volume. I'm not seeing... Uh, I, I, we are seeing the sentiment. Tops are euphoria. Everybody's so happy. Uh, the market's not going to go down. Bottoms are pain and no one can take the pain anymore. We're there as far as sentiment. The pain, we're there as far as sentiment. But volume and uh, volume and volatility are not, are not saying capitulation. Another thing, remember Bruce Greenwald said it takes two to three years for things to hit bottom. So this thing topped about two and a half years ago exactly. So we got a top in February, 2021. Uh, so we're, we're two and a half plus a month. We're two years plus, we're two years and seven months uh, from the top. So two to three years of selling off where, where it's been two to three years of selling off. Man, three and a half percent for XBI now. Just keep zooming up as we talk. So uh, spike in volume. And then the put call ratio. This, we, we are seeing an increase put. So when the market finally capitulates, it's, it's, a, it's like a, you, it's, it's a, uh, a whole lot of selling. Uh, and so the, we saw the increased volume. Uh, and then also they're saying that people are, are betting against it at that point. So it's going to be the most puts versus the, the fewest calls. And the green line here the green line here as we can see from last year, it's steadily going up. It's near its top. We don't have a massive spike, but that is up. So two to three years for capitulation. That one we got. Sentiment being awful. That one we got. Put to call ratio is pretty high. That one we're going to say, yes, we got that one. Volume, no. Uh, and uh, what was the other one? Volatility, no. So volume and volatility were not there. Sentiment, put call ratio. Uh the heck was the other third one? I can't even remember. Uh, we are there. Oh, and, and the two to three years that Bruce Greenwald talks about, uh, we are then we are there on those. So sentiment, put to call ratio, and timing, we are there on. 
Uh, here's some more. Uh, the, and then another one was flows. So one of these is going to talk about flows. Um, I, I'm not going to find where, which one it was. But anyway, it's flows. At the end, just like the selling off uh, monies. And the, so the monies, uh, we're going to see that also in the uh, flowing out of these ETFs. So where's the money flowing into? Which sectors? It's going to be flowing out. So again, we didn't, we didn't really have a, too much of it. We had it. So the money was flowing in. Oh, interesting. Very, 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 very interesting. Money was flowing into this thing as it was getting uh, obliterated. It was flowing in, interestingly, as it was bottoming. So June of 2022 was the bottom. Money was actually flowing in. And so we haven't seen it. And then the last three period, last three quarters, these are quarters, last three quarters, it's been out with the big one, the first quarter of this year. So we are seeing, we are saying, well, we'll call that, we're going to say that when they got one. So four out of six, we'll say we're checking four out of six boxes, not volume, not volatility, but timing, flows, put call ratio, and uh, I can't remember the other one. I don't care. <laughs> Move on. All right. Then we have Bivy, BioV is uh has is going to release so here is from our favorite uh one of our favorites power 2k on stock uh stock twits it is oh actually we'll just go to the we'll go to what BioV released themselves so here's the announcement from BioV. BioV announced today that it's nm 101 trial evaluating any 3107 in the treatment for alzheimer's has achieved its revised enrollment target of 400 patients they seem to have uh, done a few revisions to this i think this is there was more than more than one change i think the company anticipates announcing top line in 2020 or October 2023. Very interesting. We're also, I think, waiting to see how it does on the liver. There could be some liver toxicities. Uh, we're going to hear from their data safety monitoring board as well. The NM101 trial is a potentially pivotal phase three randomized double blind placebo controlled parallel multi center to evaluate mild to moderate primary, co primary endpoints of ADAS COG and uh, Alzheimer's disease cooperative study clinical global impression of change. So that's, so there's the cognition scale as well as the daily living, activities of daily living scale, the, uh, the, the be behavior scale, uh, not behavior, but uh, not cognition, just the how your, your lifestyle scale. NM101 trial protocol originally specified at least 316. Uh, we look forward to having top line data from this trial in October, said, Kwang Do, BioV's president and CEO, we are optimistic this trial will provide similar data to what was seen in phase two, where we got a 2.1 improvement on ADAS COG. All that sounds very good. And for patients, I'm very hopeful. Uh, am I optimistic? I am wait and see. I think that's the expression I use for this company, wait and see. Uh, why is that? The, the reason is this guy, Taryn Pizer. This is the founder and easily, easily the largest holder. You'll find any stock where anybody owns more of it than this guy owning this stock. Remember, we, we, we talked about this company before. We said, because of Taren Pizer, we are not uh, going to, uh, this is uninvestable as far as we're concerned. We said that Michael Milken was one of the biggest fraudsters in Wall Street history. This guy used to call Michael Milken dad. Pizer worked directly under and at the same desk as Milken and admired him sometimes pretending to be him on the phone and calling him dad. Well, there's no honor amongst thieves. And when the chips were down, when investigations into Milken's illegal activities began, Pfizer started, starting in 1988 provided material evidence to prosecutors against Milken, yada, yada, yada. Uh, so we said, look at his shady past. And then we went on to his next stuff. His, other, his, his following stuff was all shady as well. Well, that was the last time we talked about it. And since then, since then, he was the CEO and chairman of OnTrack, a publicly traded healthcare company, but resigned in March of 2023 after U.S. authorities charged him with insider trading and securities fraud. This is on top of everything else we talked about. He then got charged with a new count of insider trading and securities fraud. He formerly worked as a junk bond salesman at blah, 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 blah. We just talked about it with Michael Milken. Okay. Uh, but, the, but don't worry, though, because... Because they ousted him. So when he, when he got his latest insider trading, 
Uh, they accepted the resignation effective immediately after the learning of the charges from the Department of Justice for that on-track company. Okay, so they jettisoned him. Good job, team. But it doesn't matter. It's still his company. So if you look at, he's not listed there in the board of directors. For whatever reason, he's still, he's still uh, shown as the chairman of the board of directors if you just go directly to the link. Great job, web development team. But anyway, how much does he own? Uh, the institution of Taron Pizer owns 87.5%. It's his company. So to me, it's totally uninvestable. For uh, patients, I'm hopeful. For investors, I'm wary. Where this, All this guy does is shady stuff. So I am not touching it. I hope for patients, and if you are an investor, I hope you do well. But he's done even more since we talked about him last time. So... All right, what else, what, what do we guys got? BioV thought you hated it. Well, David, as you can see, I do. Apparently blocks, or at least I'm, I'm rooting for it, but I'm, I'm, as an investor, you have to know about the guy that owns 87% of it. You have to know about it. Maybe you still invest if you want to. I don't I mean, who knows? It could work. I mean, it's the biggest, uh, you know, unmet medical need in the world, but uh, they're going to find a way to screw you, it seems. I've had stocks that had good drugs, but had bad management. You need both to succeed. That's why I like Joe's picks is he has the knowledge and skills to find out both. Thank you so much, Richard. We do focus a lot on the jockeys. Uh, founders outperform, not just in biotech, but we saw that's uh, rigorous that uh, in stocks. The studies show founders outperform, especially, especially, do you remember when they especially outperform? In tough times, in tough environments, careerists that showed up there for two or three years get defensive and just try to keep their jobs. Uh, founders say, oh, what, a, what an opportunistic environment for us. Uh, let's make something happen and, and use this. The Chinese word for crisis is two words, uh, two characters. One is something bad, the other one is an opportunity. So anyway, the founders outperform, especially in tough times, which we have now. So thank you very much for that, Richard. I appreciate that. All right, great to see you guys. I'll see you in the Discord. Have a great night. And we'll do it again tomorrow. See you in the Discord. Great night. See you in the Discord.